Alright, hi guys. So let's start the next episode of five MCQs in five minutes, through which we are actually summarizing and revising all the important PYQs that has been asked in examination like INICT, NEET PG, and FMG. Since the upcoming examination definitely is going to be INICT in line, so we are having more INICT uh, oriented question, or I would say some question that has been usually derived from previous year AIMS and INICT. So let's see what I have for today as the very first question. All of the following are true about phase two clinical trial except. So you have to find out a wrong statement about phase two clinical trial. So what we know about phase two is some of the important that phase two clinical trial ke mein, few important stuff that we know that this is the first trial first to be done on patient. Patients are enrolled for the very first time in phase two in majority of the condition that we know, right? I'm not asking the exceptional cases like in antiretroviral or anti-cancer drug where we are going to enroll patient in the very first uh, phase of clinical trial. And uh, here we are uh, in the rest of the other case, cases, phase two. Apart from that, what we know about phase two, that since patients are enrolled for the very first time, remember the physiology of a patient body, body is literally different from a normal human being, right? Because in phase one, we are having normal healthy volunteers. So maximum uh, failure, maximum rate of failure is mainly occurring in phase two also, mainly in phase two also maximum failure. So let's say if 100 drugs are being rejected in an year, out of 100 drugs, 75 of them are mainly rejected in the phase two. In, uh, in other phases also they can be rejected, but majority of them are being rejected in phase two clinical trial, do remember that. Apart from that, it is not an open level study. Remember, blinding is done here. Blinding is done, blinding is done remember to remove the bias okay now first trial to be done on patients this is the first trial definitely to be done on the patient and what is the aim of the phase two the aim of the phase two that you should know the main aim of the phase two is going to be your efficacy we need to work out on the efficacy phase one ka main aim hota is safety but can we also get safety analysis also in this one yes but main aim kya efficacy safety analysis can also be done it is not an open label study remember blinding is done here so c will be the correct answer now since we are discussing uh, phase two and d is already ruled out i have already ruled out d here let me quickly uh, revise most of the important points about uh, phases of the clinical trial remember study design ke perspective if you are going to see open level is only going to be your phase one and phase four phase one and four is going to be your open level open level means everyone is aware who is taking what kind of compound and what is the possible adr single blinding means the uh, the participant is not aware double blinding means participant and researcher both of them are not aware who is taking active compound and who is taking placebo right everything else the tablet size the color everything is same for both the groups okay phase two patients are enrolled for the very first time the main aim is to determine efficacy remember right? sample size how to remember very very easily remember sample size phase one ka sample size will be around 100 2 ka 200 ya 2 to 400 so 200 ke aas pas rehta hai phase two ka phase three around 3000 you see the range that has been given in phase three is going to be 1000 to uh 5000 but on an average around 3000 will take right? so one ka 100 two ka around 200 three ka around 3000 right? Now, what is the phase three clinical trial? It's a confirmatory trial. So to confirm the efficacy, we are doing phase three clinical trial. So there is not much difference between two and three. Three is quite similar to phase two, but with larger number of patients. There are high chances that phase three majority cases may there is a multi-centric trial. Remember that multi-centric means kai center pe chal raha hai trial. Ho. Okay. Phase 4 is uh, to know the rare long term ADR, usko bolte hai PMS, that is post marketing surveillance. There is no limit on the sample size on that. Okay. Let's see what we have as the second question. A patient was on valproate for his uh, epilepsy, acquired tuberculosis, and his first line ATT. So, what is the uh, he is on first line ATT? The so first line ATT is HRZE, that is isoniazid, rifampicin, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol. We already know this one. And after a few days, there were complaints of recurrence of epileptic episode. Recurrence of epileptic episode. True statement about this cause. So what is the true statement about this cause or the treatment that is going on? So about this case, what is true statement? You have to find out, okay? Toxin released from the killed tubercle vessel like caused this epilepsy. Do you think? HRZE may rifampicin, it's one of the very, very potent enzyme inducer. Now remember, if you're going to ask me, sir, general pharma may kya important hai? So whenever examiner makes a paper, general pharma may metabolism part, say there is always one question that they always pick. In uh, If they have to ask, and if they have to make 10 question out of general pharma, 
you know six to seven times out of the ten will be make they will be making one question from here है ना because the drug interaction जो enzyme inducer enzyme inhibitor वाला है उससे काफी ज़्यादा drug interaction होता है and there are lot of clinical integrated question that can be asked or can be framed from that area remember okay so rifampicin being a potent enzyme inducer and what we know about enzyme inducer from our previous episodes that enzyme inducer always and always increase the risk of treatment failure वो जल्दी से metabolize करा देगा therefore the availability of the drug in the body will be for the shorter duration okay toxin release from the kill bacilli uh, cause the epilepsy no it is not from from the uh, toxin eh, decreased effect, effectivity of the valproate due to ATT cause the attack that is possible why because ATT is having HRCT is on first line so rifampicin must have induced the metabolism increase the metabolism and that could have reduced the overall effect of the anti-epileptic drug now option C and D is about the treatment stop valproate uh, treat the tuberculosis first stop ATT and treat the epilepsy first this is not going to be followed remember you are not going to stop valproate or stop anti-tubercular therapy and those alteration is something that can be considered but stopping a drug therapy is not considered in this case scenario remember b is the correct answer for this one which of the following doesn't follow zero order of kinetics doesn't follow zero order of kinetics right? so zero order ke mein few of the important points that you should know zero order very few drug follow zero order of kinetics right? only few drugs that we have they follow zero order kinetics and apart from that remember amount of drug that is eliminated is going to be constant amount of drug that is being cleared out or amount of drug that is being eliminated is always and always going to be constant number so it's like going to be 50 milligram or it can be 20 milligram it can be any amount but that 20 milligram is going to be constant throughout you know? so always and always number three important parameter that we always see in the zero order kinetics three important parameter one is rate of elimination clearance and t half life rate of elimination in zero order kinetics guys remember rate of elimination it is always going to be constant no matter what is the plasma concentration rate of elimination will be fixed and a rate of elevation is always going to be constant remember that clearance is going to be inversely proportional at a higher plasma concentration less amount of drug will be cleared at the lesser plasma concentration higher amount of drug so inversely proportional to plasma concentration and t half life is directly proportional to plasma concentration that means higher the plasma concentration t half life will automatically increase the more detail about this one we have already covered in our usual classes of enzyme inducer and enzyme inhibitor and the first order and zero order kinetics you guys can check it out there right now out of this one if you have to choose which of the following doesn't follow zero order remember and i always ask you to remember all the drug that is following zero order kinetics with a very very simple story that getting zero in an examination is like a war and you put an end to this war who will be putting an end to this war you because this is your war you should not get zero in, in any race in examination you put an end to this war that is stand for unfractionated heparin phenytoin aspirin ethanol tolbutamide theophylline war for warfarin you put an end to this war very simple with remember ek bar bologe hamesha ke liye yaad rahega theek hai you put an end to this war apart from that remember ethanol is the one that follows true zero order kinetics it is the one that is following true zero order kinetics that means baki sare drugs mein they are known as pseudo zero order what is the meaning of pseudo zero order that means in the initial phases initial condition they will be following first order but at the higher plasma concentration they start following zero order kinetics a very simple a very good example i can tell you that up to 10 to 20 microgram per ml pay this will be following first order phenytoin they will be following first order but whenever the plasma concentration is going beyond 20 microgram they start following zero order kinetic they start to get accumulated because clearance is inversely proportional higher plasma concentration with clearance will be reduced. a patient penetrated casualty with tachycardia hyperthermia mydriasis and dryness of mouth right everything is on top heart rate is on top hyperthermia increase in the body temperature everything will be on the top you know? dryness of mouth eh? dryness of mouth everything will be on the top and also there is going to be mydriasis so pupil size also on the top so everything is on the top is atropine point uh, atropine point i used to say atropine eh? organophosphate carbamate may kya hoga? heart rate will be lesser body temperature may be normal body temperature can be uh, decreasing the body temperature it can be normal as well okay? because of the excessive secretion body temperature may be uh, reduced there is also going to be decrease in the pupil size the only thing that you should take note is in a patient with the organophosphate carbamate poisoning there will be excessive secretion because of this excessive secretion always remember the body temperature sometimes is reduced and always there is increase in the risk of aspiration so secretion is always going to be on the higher side always remember a topine teen important cheezo ko dekhna main hamesha bolta hu class mein eyes never lies look at the eyes and after eyes look in the mouth look at the 
heart rate right if the eyes pupil size is bigger then a dryness of mouth and also there is increase in the heart rate it will be atropine poisoning atropine poisoning and for the antidote of atropine poisoning remember we are going to utilize physostigmine physostigmine apart from that how can you differentiate between opioid poisoning remember there will always and always be history of drug addict with pinpoint pupil drug addict with pinpoint pupil apart from that there will also be decrease in the heart rate there will also be decrease in the heart rate decrease in the blood pressure because opioid in the higher doses in the toxic dose they are having cardiac depressant property yeah? last question is about a pan pancuronium was given to a patient undergoing uh, surgery as a skeletal muscle relaxant to achieve a balanced anesthesia after the surgery which of the following drug will be given to reverse the muscle relaxation i think it's pretty simple that we are going to utilize neostigmine neostigmine is that we are always going to add atropine to mask the muscarinic side effect to mask the muscarinic side effect we will be adding atropine so correct answer for this one is going to be b this was a pretty simple question for all of you guys huh? so this was 5 uh, minute or rather i would say 7 to 8 minute if i am not wrong and these are some of my social media handle on which you can follow here you can get lot of mcq flash card and uh, regular updates about pharmacology and uh, this is my telegram group you can join either of them or both of them on which uh, all the pdf of previous session has been uploaded already you can check it out and if you want any other uh, you know uh, content to be delivered or any other lecture to be recorded please let me know in the comment section and please don't forget to like share and subscribe i'll see you in my upcoming class thank you very much